one of the big problems that we all have as human beings is that we do take the stance of like armor up, put walls around yourself because that's the way to keep yourself from having these bad experiences. But, and it's like, well, you might keep yourself from having some of those bad experiences, but you're also going to cut yourself off from having lots of incredible experiences. Right. And so how do we do more of that opening up? Well, opening up doesn't mean just ignorantly walking into painful situations. It, it actually means being very aware. And, and in many ways, it's a better protection than, than walling yourself off. This is Way of the Artist with Brandon Colby Cook and Evan Schulte. Exploring the challenges of the creative call so that you can claim your own path and make your life a work of art. All right, here we go. Launching in to the second part of our conversation, our last one, doing a sort of like part of our process of how do we land on a topic, a conversation that, that we sort of more is more of our standard way of doing this. So if you joined us for our first one, you, you might know a little bit of what's going on. If you're just jumping into this one, we're getting into, at least I think what we're getting into is what are ways in which we can show up more in our lives with that sort of full, alive, open person that we find ourselves to be in certain circumstances, moments like the places where we give ourselves the permission, because as we discussed, it's not the thing that gives us the permission. It's something that just get that, that for whatever reason, it allows us to give ourselves the permission to just show up in a certain kind of, of way. And those are wonderful things. I don't think that those are things that you necessarily have to cut out of your life by any means and something that you might actually need to build into your life more and more and more, right? To get those reminders, it's like that touchstone kind of a thing. But how do we how do we find the like, like what do we need to do to when we're in the midst of sort of for lack of a better word, the grind of of things, you know, when you're when you're back in your hometown, surrounded by all the familiar things, it's easy to fall back into the similar patterns and habits. There's all these traps there. And that, that alive person that you felt yourself to be, which in many ways is where we feel that we are the most real people that we've ever been. How do we how do we let that thing loose in more aspects of our lives? So that's what we're here to discuss, I think, uh, in this one. So I'm looking forward to it. I actually, I, I have no idea what I'm going to say here because I'm like, this is a huge question. Mm -hmm. You know, that one that I'm, I'm like, I don't know if I have any answers to this one necessarily. So, but that's great. I, I like that. I like that because that's the ground in which we have the most opportunity to, to really discover something new. So as I've been working through some of this stuff in my own life, I found that the things that kind of keep us bound to like kind of being stuck seem to be, at least for me so far, what I can, and maybe you can add anything if you do see anything, but like one is just uh, my past. So finding a way to not let my past become my future. And it's, it's just tricky how it works because like, you know, for example, something happens in your past. And so then you, and you don't even know that you made up a belief or a decision about things. And so then first you have to even identify the fact that you carry that belief. And then you, and then you have to, once you identify it, then breaking free of it is a whole other thing. So, you know, I've been working through some of that stuff. So one thing is the past is how do I kind of not let the past dictate my future and all of that? 
because it does happen. And then, um, and the beliefs and all the things that come with the past. Right. And then the other thing is, is like people and people see me as a certain way or sometimes they don't. And I just think they do. And, and how do I, how do I open myself up to not being bound by how I think people see me? And then the third part is how I see myself is like, I think I am who I am, but like, am I, you know, and that kind of deep, (laughs) deep spiral question you can work on. Uh, I'll start with the people, like other people. So I have heard that when you make change, you will find commonly resistance from people who quote unquote know you. Um, And there's a number of reasons why this happens. And it's good to understand the reasons why they're happening so you can better navigate it because people kind of cast us in a role and they categorize us. And it's mostly got to think about it. They're not doing it to harm us or to hurt us or limit us. They're actually just doing it because they need to make their life simple. And the, the more we can categorize things and cast people in certain roles, the easier it is for us to deal with them. We go, oh, well, you're this type of person and you're in this kind of category. And so I know who you are. I know how you relate to me. And so now I can go about my life without having to spend too much energy on that because I got energy to spend on a lot of things. And if I have to spend energy on figuring out who you are in my life every day, that becomes kind of a, a hindering thing. It becomes difficult. So you got to have some compassion for the fact that other people don't want to be rediscovering who you are every day. And you shouldn't ask people to do that, I don't think, either, because I think that's quite entitled. Um, But at the same time, I think you need to develop the courage and the strength to begin to help people open up to you are something different or more or other than what you, they may think you are. And I found this particularly difficult with family because, you know, family can have a, you know, they've known your whole life and you're just kind of like that way with them. And so, you know, and, and I would find that the hardest thing for me to change was my, my, my relationship with my family. This is something I feel like I've worked through quite a lot already, but I would go back for a family dinner and it would be like regression. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, what is happening? I'm slipping back into like, like childhood me. And when I'm with my friends, I'm like this way. But then when I'm with my family, I just can't seem to open up. So I, I don't know if anyone can relate to this, but I do feel like these are elements that we should probably touch on. Um, the view of myself is an interesting one because I feel like there's this idealistic view of myself that I'm, I'm always kind of trying to cast myself in, but then this like, version of myself that I can't help but cast myself in, but don't want to. (laughs) And I'm sure people can relate to that. So, and then the other one was, uh, just, uh, uh, well, so how you cast yourself, how others cast you and then, um, your past. So I feel like those are a few elements that should maybe be entered into this conversation and maybe we can explore them because I am interested in like, how do I do this without making the external thing, the excuse, right? Mm. And whether it be a vacation or whether it be, you know, drinking or play or doing something or acting or whatever it might be that you might be doing that's giving you permission to be free, could you be free without using something else to be free? And I'm, I'm like, I think there is a way. I do believe there is a way. But how? That's what I'm interested in exploring. Well, yeah, because those things, like, they're, they're not, they're, they're showing us something right? They're just showing us about a capacity that we have, you know, it's, it's, and, and so, yeah, that's what I think is an interesting part of this is that it's not simply, again, that those things are, are doing this thing to us. It's just, they're, they're just showing something to us and, and and something that's accessible, you know, throughout our lives. And, you know, I knew coming into this one that, that, as much as I didn't know what I was going to say, I was like, I have the sense that the, the th- that the thing we're biting off here, <laughs> which is a big one thing to bite off here because it is so much of it is a perceptual thing. It's, it's about how we are thinking and looking at life and ourselves and, and our place in the world and and there's like we're talking about really really big things that aren't just 
simple, there, there's no simple solutions to this. You know, this, there's real, there's real, uh, awareness and maybe even perseverance that's required to, to make that kind, th- these kinds of shifts that we are talking about in this conversation. And two things that came up to me, came, that came to me as you were, as you were talking. And, you know, in our last conversation, we, we talked about uh, our, one of our absolute favorites, Alan Watts, who, you know, at, at this point, I, you know, I fully recognize that Alan Watts is a figure who, who is very much probably more than anyone sh- has shaped my thinking more than any other figure I've ever known. But he had a, he has in one of his lectures, this, this thing of like, what are some of the really maybe potentially the only great philosophical questions that exist. And one of them, I think there was two of them that he had, but one of them was about life. And he says, is it serious? (laughs) Right. Is it serious? And I think that that actually has a lot to do with what we're talking about because we're talking about how do we have that openness, that open, alive life in life. And I think a big is so, so that what's, well, what's the, the counter to that? It's like, okay, so then what is the thing that's closing us? What are the things that are closing us? And those are all internal things that are going on there. And so it's like, well, I think a lot of that has to do with how seriously are we taking things mm-hmm. in our life? I mean, it's like in, when you look at so many things that, that open us up like travel or playing sports or music or, or dancing or whatever that outlet is, it's because we're not, it's not serious. We allow ourselves to not take life too seriously. We allow ourselves not to take ourselves too seriously and I mean, sometimes you still find people who do that in those spaces and everyone just kind of goes, what the fuck's that guy's problem? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like, take it easy, man. Like, hey, we're all like, we're playing a game here. Or we're just, or, you know, we're on the beach. Like, where, what's the, where's the problem? You know, and, and so there's that, that thing. But yeah, there, for the most part, there's a, there's a sense of um, not taking it too seriously and i think that sometimes when we are in the arena of our work or our personal relationships or whatever it is there's this there's this seriousness with which we bring to it and i think that that really closes us off from that full alive human being and the other thing that came to my mind as well um is judgment I don't have as I don't know if I have as much to say at this moment uh, on that as I as I did about the serious thing, but there's when we have judgments about ourselves and about others and about what's happening, you know, in our lives that that strikes me as another thing that really closes uh, closes us off, right? I have a judgment about the work that I'm doing right now. I have a judgment about how much I'm getting paid. I have a judgment about, you know, what, you know, I don't know, just where, where I am in life right now. I have judge, you know, there's, there's so many judgments and, and I think that, that those things feed into each other, like the judgment and the serious, the seriousness of, of life. And I mean, and I think why this is, something i mean i'm not saying anything new here because judgment is something that literally (laughs) every wisdom tradition spiritual tradition that humankind has ever known has pretty much taken a hard look at that one there right which is just saying like hey watch your judgments watch how judgmental you are because that's gonna create problems right and it's very much you know like I, I would say that most spiritual traditions are at their core 
very much about the, the very thing that we're talking about, which is, hey, if you can learn how to open to life more, life opens up to you. You know, like the, it's, the, that's how that whole thing, thing goes. It's what you're showing up as. And if you open yourself to it, there's, there's, you find so much more is going on. Not that it wasn't there, right? Because that's always usually the thing that's, that's going on there too. It's, it's not that, it's not that something out there has changed. It's that you have changed. That, that, that aliveness and that richness has always been there. You're just now, you've just now become awake to it. So, God, this is a big thing. We, <laughs> I'm just realizing more and more. It's like this is a big thing that we've just decided to 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 get into. Yeah, well, I guess if we could walk away with even a little bit of, uh, you know, even just a little bit of insight on how to do this a little bit more in our lives, I think it would be a win. Because yeah, this is a big one, and you know, and it's it's one of those things where you know maybe this is one of those ones where you want to do it and it's, you have to accept that it's not done overnight. You know, it's going to, this takes time. It's going to take interaction with the world. It's going to take some, some practice and some, you know, just some mindfulness around things, man. There's a lot of things that came up while you were talking that I was thinking about. Um, well, I mean, one of them was like wisdom. I was thinking about wisdom and ignorance. And when you're kind of in a state, place of ignorance and particularly youth and ignorance, they tend to go to together, you know, because like when you're young, you just don't know, you don't know what could go wrong. You don't know what can happen. You don't know what's really out there. You haven't learned about all the facets of the world as say someone that, you know, is older, if they've been out there more in the world, it just, you know, and so, uh, the, the having a good quality mentor when you're younger is so helpful um, if you can actually find a genuine one that can give you real valuable information and not like kind of take advantage of your youth and all of that. Right. So it's, it's not an easy thing to do. And also like, you know, um, the mentor thing, like I, you know, just to kind of it's off topic, I suppose, but like there is a bit of a, in our culture, there's the snake oil mentor, you know, and I think you got to be as a young person, you know, Sometimes you get taken by the snake oil mentor because you don't know. And um, you have to, you know, sometimes you have to learn these lessons the hard way. I think at the end of the day, one of the things that I've been trying to work through on past experiences of, say, being taken advantage of is that I try to look at everything as not how it hurt me, harmed me, or damaged me, but how it helped me, improved me, and advanced me. And those types of reframes are really important particularly when it comes to the past and lessons that are hard. And one of the, one of the kind of things that I would say, if, if I could pass down a wisdom, if I could, I would say that, look, most of what you're going to learn is going to be through some sort of pain. And if you can just kind of accept that as normal and like pain makes you pay attention. And, and the things honestly, like your parents, for a lot of us, our parents will teach us all sorts of great stuff. And we don't hear it. And then all of a sudden something else happens. And then we go, they'd be like, I've been telling you that for years, you know, like it's a common thing. Right. And, and so anyway, uh, the thing is, is the reason why that is, is because our parents tell us and they try to help us avoid the pain. And so we think, Oh, whatever you're worrying, whatever. But then you go and experience the pain and then you learn. And there's just some things you have to learn the hard way. So on the lessons that I've had to learn the hard way, I try to look at them as things that, um, serve me today. So I try to like reframe them because there are some things that happen. I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, I wish this didn't happen. And I wish I could have dodged that or avoided that. And I'd be better off. But I try to look how I'm actually better off because it went wrong, because the mistake happened or whatever, because that way I can see how it served me. So I'm like, well, this built empathy. Cause now I understand people who have been through this now. And this gave me an awareness of something I didn't have an awareness of. Um, so anyway, okay, so the reason why I want to bring up this ignorance and wisdom thing is because ignorance works for you up to a certain point until it doesn't. And I think we all kind of experience this in our own way at our own time. 
And when we run out of ignorance, like almost like fuel in the tank and it just runs out and you become reluctantly wise, let's put it that way. You become aware, reluctantly aware. You can no longer, you can no longer move through the world not knowing. And so then you have to move through the world knowing. And this brings a whole new set of challenges because now that you know, you go, well, I'm going to protect myself or I'm going to do this. And that's what closes us up. And I think a big part of this conversation is about how do we become unclosed? How do we open back up once we've been closed off? Because for the young people, I'd imagine like the young people, you know, if you're, if you're a young teenager, or early twenties, and I imagine you're listening to this conversation, at least if you were me, You'd be like, yeah, we'll just fucking do this. That's probably what I would have said. Because I just was kind of ignorant. I didn't know. And I didn't have certain experiences. And I'd just be like, just do it. You know? It was almost a, like a, a Nike thing. I was just like, just do it. You know, just go for it. And it's like, yeah, well, when you get older and you have some like bad experiences or negative experiences or painful experiences, however you want to frame that, you start to go, well, I have to be careful about doing that now. One last thing I'll say. So motorcycling has become a big thing in my life. Motorcycling is a fascinating hobby because there's so much danger in it. If you do the wrong things, make a mistake, don't know what you're doing, there's so there's there is so much danger in it. And for a young person that doesn't know what could go wrong on a motorcycle, it's easy to go speed down the highway and just say fuck it, I'm just going to do it, right? Like and you see this happen and some people, they just, they never kind of interact with something bad, but sometimes they do. And, and when people interact with something bad on a motorcycle, especially high speeds, and especially when they make, um, you know, a mistake, it's, it can be, you can die, right? So it becomes a high risk activity and ignorance gives you this illusion that you're not taking a high risk. And so then, you know, I'm, I'm more mature. I'm older. I've, I've, I've seen more things in my life. Um, I kind of understand what can go wrong. So there is a certain amount of like when, when I'm riding a motorcycle, I have a carefulness and a mindfulness that I might not have had when I was younger. And so one of the things that I do is that I, I watch these videos and I wasn't going to, initially I wasn't, I'm like, I don't want to see this. I don't even want to look at it. But one, at one point I was like, you know what? I need to look at like close call and accident motorcycle things. I need to look at them to learn. And I found uh, some teachers who explain patterns and they help you see how accidents occur and where mistakes happen and how to recognize patterns on the road and, and all sorts of stuff. And so what ends up happening is now when I'm riding, I feel way safer and I know what I'm capable of doing. And it's given me access to stuff where I don't have to be trepid, like I don't have to be scared because I know what to look for. And the more aware I become, the more confident of a rider I become because I begin to see how things work. And what, like this, most people don't understand this. Here's, here's the most interesting thing I found out about motorcycle riding. And I would say this would be the last thing that most people talk about. Motorcycle riding is about empathy and compassion as much as any art, because you need to understand other drivers you need to understand what they're thinking, how they're feeling, what they want. And if you can understand what they're thinking and what they want, you can begin to predict and anticipate how they're going to move. So like there's this one thing, for example, called an open lane pattern. You're, there's a two lanes, one lane's open, one lane's closed off. If you're driving down the open lane, you should be prepared that other people probably want to move into that open lane because that's the open lane. That's where the speed is going to, you know, they want to go somewhere. So when you're riding down an open lane and there's traffic to the right of you, you need to be prepared. Hey, at any moment, someone might want to take this open lane. And at the same time, you need to kind of understand that I'm smaller, like on a bike in their rear view mirror, I don't show up like a big car or a big truck. They might not even see me and if I'm moving at a really fast speed, I'm very small in their mirror and all of a sudden I'm really big and I need to keep that in mind. So if you're going to speed down an open lane and there's a bunch of cars to your, you know, to the side of you, you should be prepared and recognize that, Hey, 
at any moment, one of these people could pull it and it's nothing against me. It's just, this is what they want to do. And so I find that type of awareness incredibly freeing because it helps me to navigate the road with more speed and more precision, but in a safer way without being scared. Yeah. I think that this brings up like a fairly, a very important distinction between, between the desire for, for wisdom and awareness versus security and armor. Cause I think that that's, the mistake, you know, you brought up like having experiences where, you know, things go wrong, you get hurt all, or, you know, through ignorance and through life and just learning as you go through life, like these, you know, bumps and bruises and scrapes are, are unavoidable. Right. And things you don't want to necessarily avoid them to a certain extent. That's part of, it's, it's part of being human. And, you know, you, to, to have these things to, to, to get these wounds and to, and to live through them. And the thing is, is that, yeah, it's almost like you have two different directions you can, you can take. And one is the open road and one is the closed road, right? Or, or is just, or is to just hide out, hide out off somewhere. Right. And because we often hear about, it's like, you know, armor up, you know, people talking about armoring up. And I, I, I think that that's a mistake. Like, I think it's just like, no, you don't want to armor up, learn, right. learn, right? The, what, what was the wisdom of the thing? Because the thing is that if you're armored up all the time, right? Well, there are situations where that's just totally inappropriate. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's completely inappropriate. It's like, Hey, we're just out for a fucking drink right now. Like what's going on? <laughs> you know, or like it's, it's just, it, it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense. You could think of it in another way of, you know, if you're, if you're out on a, like a, on like a sort of like a two week pilgrimage or something like that. And you're just keeping your, like your big raincoat covered over top of you. And it's like, well, it's like, it's like I've rain happened one time and I don't have my raincoat. And now I, so I'm just, it's like, yeah, but it's, it's, it's 30 degrees Celsius outside right now. And it's like, it seems hot. No, 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 I'm going to, and like the, what you're going to get is you're not going to feel the sun. You know, yeah. you know, like you're just going to be boiling and uncomfortable, you know, and in pain unnecessarily because you've armored yourself up because of some past experience. It doesn't make sense for you to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You learn to bring a raincoat because you forgot to bring a raincoat and that was painful. Yeah. Right. That was uncomfortable to go through, but it doesn't mean you just armor up all the time, right? Like that. And I think that that's, that's part of, of the, that can be a mistake that we often make. It's like, and, and it's an understandable and I have so much, uh, you know, and I, I'm definitely armored up in ways that I'm sure I'm not even conscious of, <laughs> right? But it's, it's, I, I understand that's just a mistaken view and, and position to, to have because like, yeah, it, you went through something and it, and it hurt. It real hurt. It, it really hurt. But armoring is not the way in which to get to, to find enjoyment in life again. Mm-hmm. Right. It's the wisdom that you want. Mm-hmm. So that it's like, you can go down the path. It's like, Oh, I actually recognize this. I'm going to just go over this way. I can avoid this thing. I cannot walk into that thing that gave me the thing as opposed to, all right, armor up. I'm going to barge through and it won't hurt. Like uh, it's, that's, that's a surefire way of closing yourself off to life from the, from the full breadth of experience of life. Right. Because like, if you, there's like, because if you if you think of taking those things all the way to the end, just trying to use some some imagery here, you know, like the person who wants to keep themselves completely safe and never get hurt and and whatever is like that that is guess what you are a person who's going to be completely closed to everything. You have 
locked yourself inside of a dark, you know, underground cave, <laughs> you know, within a castle where the light never shines, right? It's like, okay, good. No one can get to me here. I'm safe here. It's like, yeah, but you're in a, you're in a dark fucking dungeon. Yeah. You're open to nothing. No, no one will ever see you. No, like you will never, you, you, you won't, you won't feel the, the warmth of the sun or the, or the coolness of the rain or the, or, or see the, see the sun set or smell of, you know, like, like smell like the rain after it's been dry. You know what I mean? Like there's all of these things that, that, that they're gone now through that, through that choice. So, I mean, this thing of, of, yeah, this is just, I guess I'm just illustrating or, or expanding upon this idea of like, you know, the thing that we want to take through life. And I think part of the, one of the big problems that we all have as human beings is that we do take the stance of like armor up, put walls around yourself because that's the way to keep yourself from having these bad experiences. But, and it's like, well, you might keep yourself from having some of those bad experiences, but you're also going to cut yourself off from having lots of incredible experiences, right? And so how do we do more of that opening up? Well, opening up doesn't mean just ignorantly walking into painful situations. It, it actually means being very aware. And, and in many ways, it's a better protection than than walling yourself off yeah there's some interesting things man i mean like you know when motorcycling has been such a such a big part of my life recently and the, the lessons that i've learned from it have been so great i feel like you know you can look at really anything and you can start to pull lessons from it if you can kind of pair the analogy to life um you know, one of the things with motorcycle riding is, you know, it's highly recommended that you wear gear, particularly that you wear gloves and definitely wear a helmet. And the uh, thing is, is, you know, there's this illusion of confidence that comes with doing anything. And, and with motorcycle riding, it's no different. You feel so secure at a certain point, you know, you understand the feel of things, you just feel totally in control. And, um, you know, if you're not going to wear protective gear, you know, there's, there's anomalies, there's things that happen that you would never expect would happen. And, um, for example, you know, there was a, there's this, you can watch this online if you, if you so care to do it, but there's a, a video of a motorcycle rider who is waiting at an intersection, waiting to take a left, just stopped at the stoplight, you know, no problem. Everything's good. And all of a sudden, this kind of pickup truck comes going through the intersection, like not per perpendicular to them. And then, boom, another car hits the pickup truck. And the pickup truck had a ladder in the back of it. And the ladder, as the truck gets spun, goes flying out of the truck and hits the rider on the bike. So, <laughs> okay, this is the world we live in. We live in a world where something like a freak accident like that happens how are you ever going to be prepared for that? Mm -hmm. Okay. You're on a motorcycle. Um, you're vulnerable to what, you know, you're, in, you're a pedestrian walking down the street. It could have been a pedestrian. Well, I've just it happens to be a motorcycle rider. Here's the thing. Are you never going to cross the street? Are you never going to walk outside anymore? Um, there's so many incidents where these freak incidents can happen and we can do everything right. And we're still not prepared, you know, and, uh, you, you got to look at life to a certain degree with, you know, every time I, I talk to another person, anytime I step outside the door, anytime I go after anything I want in life, there is some element of risk that is totally unknown to me. That is just totally beyond comprehension, beyond preparation. And, uh, you know, and, and I just need to accept that that is a part of the reality of going out into this world. And, you know, and I think you can do your best to try to pay attention and prepare yourself and, and, you know, keep your head on a swivel and do all of this stuff. Um, 
And there's a certain amount of you have to like walk out the door every day and say, you know what? This could be my last day. This could be the last moment. Uh, this could be a life changing thing. And, 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 and I'm going to do my very best to live this as fully and truthfully as I can. And, and I think that that's a really important element of it. Mm. Another element that comes up, you know, I'll, I'll just keep with this motorcycle motif because I'm having fun with it. But another thing with motorcycle riding is like, okay, so you wear your gear, right? You wear your helmet, you wear your gloves. Cause if you fall off the thing, um, getting road rash, horrible and smashing your head on the cement or anything else, horrible horrible, horrible consequences that can come with that, that can be, you know, that people survive just by uh, certain things. So in the, in the, in the kind of analogy of life, you know, you, I love this analogy you brought about, is it armor up more or become more like wise and aware? I, I don't know how you did it, how you said it, but that armor up to a degree. Okay. But like, just so you're, you know, like not so much though that like you can't do anything you know like if i get on my motorcycle like i've 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 i have full protective gear i got my jacket my gloves my helmet i got everything my my armored legs my boots everything i sometimes get on my motorcycle in just jeans without the armored knee pads and 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 you know hip pads and sometimes I wear just my leather jacket without the shoulder pads, elbow pads, and all of that. And it feels different. I feel a little bit more vulnerable. Um, and so I kind of made a decision with myself. I said, okay, well, I'm making a risk. Whenever I decide to wear less of my gear, I'm taking a risk out here on the road because there are these certain things. So I decided to myself, I just said, okay, I'll draw a boundary. And I, I mean, look, People may disagree with me, but this is kind of how we need to navigate the world. If I'm just going several blocks away or I'm just going in a short kind of ride, it's it's acceptable. Not that I will do it, but it's acceptable if I have more minimalistic gear. You know, because maybe I'm going out, maybe I'm doing something and maybe having all the gear is just not kind of practical for life. And I don't want to have all this stuff. So, okay, fine. But like if I'm, I decided if I'm going to go for a long ride, if I'm going down like a highway or I'm going down some bigger thing, higher speeds, I'm wearing all my gear and I'm just doing it because, um, I feel comfortable, but something could happen. The other day I was riding and we had a big snowstorm and there was a bunch of ice and whatever. And most of the snow had gone away, but there was still some ice kind of left around. And I was debating whether I should even go out on my bike this day because of conditions. But I looked outside, things looked okay. It looked like the snow and the ice was managed and it was warm enough where it wasn't just going to be all over the road. So I felt secure enough to go down and, and do a short trip to like pick up some groceries and do whatever. And as I was driving down the road, this big truck, like lift, big wheels, everything um, started kind of just encroaching on me and just pushing on the back of my bike. And you, there's nothing, you feel so tiny on a bike when you have a big ass truck, like, like driving up behind you. And this guy is just like, I guess he's frustrated. I'm going in the speed limit. I'm actually probably like right, maybe even just a little over. And he's pushing on me. He wants me to go faster. And I remember this wisdom that I learned through motorcycle riding through like my teachers, which is like ride your own ride. And this is a hard thing to do sometimes. And I want to pair this m wisdom back to life. You're going to have pressure from people that are telling you like, go for it, take a risk, do the bigger thing. I, you know, and you need to sometimes say, Hey, wait a minute. Mm, I could slip. Like I was thinking as I'm driving, I'm like, if you start pushing your speed, Brandon, if you start trying to appease this guy, now you've put yourself in danger. Now you could crash your bike. Now you could all of a sudden slip out. You know, you're taking it safe based on how you feel comfortable. And so I drove along and I tolerated him for a little bit. I just tolerated him for like a few minutes. And then I found a spot where I could safely kind of navigate to the side and then let him pass. Now, here's one other story I'll share with you, Evan. One night I had to drive home late at night on my motorcycle and I was driving down the highways and there was no, it was cloudy and it was nighttime and it was dark and there were no lights on the road and windy road. 
And when you're on a motorcycle, this can be kind of frightening, right? So anyway, I'm fine. I'm driving along. I had another situation. A truck wanted to pass me. This time I wasn't going quite the speed limit. I was actually going a little lower because of conditions. And he's pushing on me, wants to pass me or they want to pass me. And I said, okay, you know, I'm going to pull over to the side. And I started to hit gravel, but it was night and I couldn't see it. And my bike started to slip and I stayed calm. I managed to maintain my bike and not let it slip out from under me. But because I was trying so hard to appease this driver who wanted to pass me, I nearly like slipped my bike out on the side of the road. And after that moment, it's not like I'm not going to get on my bike again, but I said, you know what? Fuck them. I'm going to ride my ride. If they have a problem with that, I'm going to ride my ride no matter what. And then when I feel safe, and this is about boundaries, I feel like this is a huge part of this conversation. You do need to figure out your boundaries because there's going to be other people and they want stuff and you want stuff and other people who want stuff sometimes make your life more dangerous and you need to learn the courage and the strength if you want to be able to navigate this world to be able to say no to people and to be able to tolerate sometimes uh, people who are intolerant and not compassionate and they lack empathy and they're selfish and they're arrogant and they're jerks or whatever you want to, you know, however you want to frame them. And they're just, they don't care about you. They only care about themselves. And there's so many wisdoms in motorcycle riding because you're vulnerable in certain situations and you need to learn how to navigate, which can be a very dangerous world unnecessarily. But the thing is, is you find yourself in these situations and you just have to figure out how am I going to do this? Yeah, I think that being, you know, being open and, and all of that to in, in your life, you know, being more open in your life does not, does not mean checking your, your reason yeah. at the door, you know, and far, far from it. You know, I think that Because as, as you're saying, like very often, very often, like, yeah, it can be, it can actually be, uh, a danger, particularly when, yeah, like you're, there's a, there's an external pressure that's being put on you. I think that that's, that's very, that's whenever we feel that kind of a thing, we should be very questioning of, of whatever that thing is. It's not really like, oh, I'm so open to it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's the thing to be open to, you know, is really, I think it's about your, it's about your, your complete present awareness of the moment, right? Because that that openness is not always just about is just about oh yeah just like the party <laughs> to to characterize it in a certain kind of a way it's like no it's whatever is happening right now whatever what is the thing that is happening right now and if the thing that's happening right now is something that strikes you as just like you're like whoa hang on a second this is like this is dangerous like it just, this just feels dangerous to me right now. Well, that's, that's a part of being open to life as well. And in fact, it's probably very often the thing that's keeping you safe, right? But it's, that's something that, again, you, you find it in, in the moment, right? It's, it's, you find it in, in presence of what's going on as opposed to, as opposed to just thinking that, everyone is pressuring you, you know, with it. It's just like, speed up, speed up, right? It's like, well, maybe that person has no problem. Maybe they like the speed that you're going. You're like, yeah. oh yeah, this is a nice cruise. Just enjoy the scenery around us or whatever. <laughs> you know, it's like, but when you, it's it's when you're walking around projecting all that, that stuff on, onto the world where that's a closing off type of scenario. But, you know, I, I so many of what you, so many of these, these things that you're bringing up about, about riding, uh, motorcycle riding are, yeah, like absolutely like very interesting kinds of parallels to bring to it because it's, again, it's, it's, it's situational, 
right? It's, it's, and, and I think that that's part of, again, the problem of, of what closes us off is because we want to just, we want it to just be like, all right, let me just have the answer and just like, and just apply it across the board. Right. Um, just, just slather this paint, slather this paint (laughs) over the whole thing and then it'll be fine. Right. And it's like, well, that's just not how it works. And, and some of the things you're talking about, like, you know, some of these, you know, just horrifying sounding accidents that, you know, happen to people, which again, as you said, it's not just being on a motorcycle that could happen to you as a pedestrian waiting to, to cross the street. These things can happen. And I think that, that that's an important point because, you know, there's life, life is not, what's the word that I'm looking for? It's not a very fancy word, but it's like, you know, life is not, life is, is not just safe, you know, like it's just like, there's, there's no anything can happen. And I think that that's part of the whole thing of, of, you know, when people talk about these moments where, you know, they lose somebody in their life or they have a close call with something is that there's this realization. It's just like, whoa, like there's, you can, you can try and, and plan and protect and do all of these things to, that in, that you think will make you completely safe and secure. But but that there's life is just not safe in so many ways, you know, that that's, that's part of it. And there's something that's very interesting that happens to people when they really fully just accept that where it's like, okay, right. I get that. You know, you, you do what you can, you know, to, to keep yourself alive. But really the important thing is, is, that recognition of like, but this could go at any point in time, even with a full set of armor, <laughs> something can happen and I'll, and I, and I'll, I'll get hurt anyway. Right. So what do you do with that knowledge? What do you do with that understanding that no matter what you do, there's always going to, there's always an element of anything can happen. Anything could happen right? That, that completely disarms all of your protections. So what do you do with that? And, and what come, what you do with that is that it requires a full, a a fuller embrace of life, I think, right? What other alternative is there when you realize it doesn't matter how many layers of armor and walls you put yourself you put yourself around you. There's no protection from life. Mm-hmm. There's no protection from life. So just like, so what are you going to do? Well, be as aware and awake and present to your life as possible. Like that's the only, that's the only thing that you can really equip yourself with. Well, I agree with that. I, I be as aware as you can, you know, like, become open your mind to seeing more and then you know not using what you see against yourself to build a prison because i think that you know the the life of trying to live safety as your main priority like safety is important safety is one of my highest values definitely one of my highest values but it's also one of those things where it needs to be kept in check you know and i think everything is kind of like that it's like Um, you know, the safest thing to do is to live in a armored room and never leave and have everything delivered to me. And then, you know, I mean, that's no way to live though. You know I mean? At a certain point you're like, well, this is a prison cell. That's what a prison cell is. It's like, you know, uh, you know, and so you, 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 you know, you maybe have negative experiences with people. And so then you go, well, the response I have to that is to just not deal with people anymore and to cut all people out of my life and I'll be alone. And, you know, and they're like, okay, try doing that for a while. You know, like eventually that becomes problematic in and of itself. I think that there's a, what's interesting about this conversation to me, and I know we're kind of getting to that witching hour, but it's like, 
so maybe there's kind of the permission of being open is kind of like the um the willingness to l like look at how you can step out into the world without with without fear and with an awareness and an acceptance that like you you know like if you go after your dreams you know or you go create a project there's danger in that you know there's danger in that you'll get criticized that you know negative things can happen that you know uh, if you go and you fall in love that you can get heartbroken you know there's these risks that come with these actions right and so it's kind of like seeming to me that it's like i mean if you travel there's danger right but i think a lot of the time when we travel we kind of you know, there's a lot of times where we, well, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's different for certain people, certain cases, but there's a certain amount of like, okay, I'm going to open myself up. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to test my boundaries a little bit. And I think that life is a little bit like that. I think for the artist approach to it is test your boundaries and then draw your boundaries. To me, that's kind of what it seems to be. It's like, well, you know, like, um, you know, push, you can push your limits a little bit. Um, one of the rules that I learned in motorcycle school, I'm going to bring it back around one more time <laughs> is, uh, never ride it unless you're on the track, never ride at a hundred percent of your capacity. The most you should ever ride at on the road is 80% of your capacity. Always leave yourself 20% of air, 20% room, never push yourself right to the max limit. And because if you're 80 if you make a mistake, you'll find yourself at a hundred, but you'll still be able to recover. If you're at a hundred and you make a mistake, you have no recovery room. You're done. It's over. You crash. Right. And, uh, you can see this is true. Like, you know, you can see where most people crash on a corner. It's because they were pushing at a hundred percent of their capacity, their capacity, not necessarily the capacity of what the bike could do, but their capacity mm -hmm. and they have no room. And, you know, I think with things, if you're new to something, if you're just starting, you might not know what your capacity is. So be gentle. Don't like, if you have, a, if, if you like the, ride your own ride is a great metaphor in motorcycling as is for life. If you have friends or people pushing you to go further than you feel comfortable, don't do it because you're trying to impress them or fit in. Take the corner slower, you know, in the motorbike, go just, just ride your own ride. And you know, yeah, sure, whatever. They make fun of you. That, like, oh, you're slow, whatever. I don't know whatever you think is going to happen. But the thing is, is like, if I was riding with a new rider, someone who is brand new, and they wanted to go slower, I would be fine with that. I don't want them to crash. I don't want them to get hurt. And if you're with people who care about you, they won't pressure you to do something you don't want to do. So you can also use this as a polarizing thing to go, if people are pushing me in a way that's uncomfortable. It's making this dangerous. That's making my life dangerous. Maybe those are not the right people in your life and maybe you should remove them or get away from them. And I've had to do a lot of reparations with my relationships to people because, you know, I've, I brought some bad people into my life. Some, some, I'd say well, bad toxic type of people, people who are, who were jealous, envious, destructive, and I didn't have good boundaries and I didn't know how to call them out. And, and, and so there's this kind of thing of like, Oh, you know, all people are bad and people do this type of thing. And it's like, no, no, no. Some people do those things. Some people are very loving and kind and compassionate and caring. And they look out for me and I need to bring more of those people in my life. And when I identify the people that are the toxic or whatever type of people in my life, I need to draw boundaries with them and either draw boundaries with them or remove them from my life. And I think this is a good way to begin to kind of create that blank canvas we're talking about because, you know, there, there are people who in your life, sometimes they don't, they, they're not helping you create a blank canvas in your life. They're not helping you become who you need to become. They're not open to you saying, Hey, you know, like I changed my mind about this. Those might not be the best people for you. And, and it can be scary to be alone for a little while, but I think that one of the things that in this conversation, it's a huge conversation, but maybe it's just sometimes, you know, you need to reevaluate who you're around and whatever, because at the end of the day, I think 
what I'm a champion of is that you live your life as authentically and truthfully and courageously as you want to. And I don't care what anyone says you should be or have to be or have to do. I, I like, I just want people to live with a sense of fulfilled, authentic, um, love in their life and not to be scared hiding away and, and thinking things are all horrible in the world. Because the truth is, is yeah, some things are horrible and some things are really bad and some people are really horrible and really bad. But, um, we all have to navigate those sharks in the water. And I don't want to see someone hide away just because they've encountered too many sharks. You know, there are safe waters for you. There are good places for you to swim and boat and do whatever you want to do. You know, another metaphor, (laughs) but it's like, you know what? Uh, but sometimes we, you know, sometimes we just, we got to like reevaluate. So anyway, this is something I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm reevaluating, I'm recalibrating. And, uh, you know, this conversation has actually helped me a lot with that. It's helped me look at a few ways in which I can recalibrate and essentially bring the vacation to me and not have to get something external for me to be free and going, Oh yeah, I could do that. I could, I could draw some boundaries here. I could navigate this a little bit better. And as I pass this advice on to who's ever listening and yourself included, it's kind of like, well, yeah, I can take some of that myself. You know what I mean? And I will, uh, I don't know. That's what I got so far. So anyway, uh, next beer yeah. or you got something to say? No, 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 no. Okay. No, okay. Beer. Yeah. Cause we've got to wrap this baby up. Um, this is another yellow dog brewing company beer. This one's called growl. So this is an extra pale ale. Um, 6% alcohol, a little stronger, uh, than the huge, but, uh, yeah, no, it's been pretty good. It's, um, a little bit more, uh, bitter than our last one, I would say. Um, still tasty, still enjoyable. Um, any thoughts? Yeah, it's uh, a little bit, it's got a bit more of a heaviness to it than the, than the last one we had, which was like a West Coast IPA, mm-hmm. I believe it was, but it's still good. You know, they still feel very much in a, a similar kind of vein, similar family, but uh, yeah, it's been good. It's been good. All right. right. Wrapping this one up. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I don't know if there was necessarily anything practical that came out of this conversation, which I thought maybe we would stumble upon something because I, I think that so much of this topic that we went into is, is, you know, is so much of like an internal game in terms of how do we, you know, how do we flip our wiring Mm -hmm. essentially in, in terms of how we're, we're looking at things in terms of being open and, and with, with life more open and, and, uh, what was the word permission, giving ourselves that, that permission to live our lives more openly. And, you know, I, yeah, there's, it's big thing. I think for me, there's, it's big things to wrap, to wrap your head around, uh, that you really got to spend time on and, and, and contemplate, like really, really sit with them to, in order to fully understand and realize the, the truth of it, you know, to really realize the truth that there's in, in so many regards that there is no protection doesn't exist, you know, and that the more that we try to make ourselves safe, the worse life becomes, you know, and in fact, the, the more safe we try to make ourselves, the more unsafe, I think that we, we start to feel you know, because, because then it's just, you're, you're, it's just a constant battle of trying to search out dangers and protect yourself from every danger. And in, in a, in a, in a world that is just constant change and things that are moving. So it's just, you know, like it's, it's what a futile 
battle to be fighting and and for us to really i and i'm not claiming that i i fully i fully grasped the depths of this even though I, it's like i i do understand you know on a decent level at least the the truth of that how futile that is to to try and protect ourselves from from life because it doesn't exist it doesn't exist but there is an a way in which we engage with life that when we engage with our our full openness and presence because in so many ways that is actually the best protection very often the times when we get hurt it's because we were we were trying to apply something to the moment that that wasn't right you know it was like uh, like to go back to a metaphor that i used it's like you know on the pilgrimage wearing the big heavy rain jacket when the sun is shining and it's hot outside, right? It's like, well, yeah, the rain jacket's helpful for the rain, but not now. You're causing yourself pain right now. How often do we do things like that, right? We're projecting something onto a moment that's not real. It's not what's happening. And that's now a thing that's causing us pain as opposed to, oh, the sun is shining. It's hot. I'm going to wear my t-shirt and shorts right now. Oh, the rain's going. Okay, now I'm going to pull out my rain jacket. Your your ability to be aware and present to the thing that is that is actually real and present <laughs> is actually your best protection from pain. Right? It's not it doesn't mean that you won't experience it, right? But being able to meet it, you know, for whatever it is, is is far superior than any kind of armor that you could possibly concoct, which is from the moment you've created it has has holes and weaknesses and is falling apart and rusting the moment that you've made it. So I I think that you know again it's not a, it's it's a big thing it's a big it's a big thing to endeavor into, but yeah, there's, there's no protection from life. And, and that I think understanding and, and deepening that understanding is actually the thing that, uh, that I think in the end will, will helps us to open ourselves more up to it is, is that acceptance that it's like, okay, that's how it is. Right. Not, not resisting that, not fighting it, but actually, actually almost appreciating that that that's part of the human experience that's part of what it is to be human and and is part of what gives being being a human its richness well you know i mean there's no protection i, I don't know if i necessarily agree with that i'm trying to i'm trying to work that one out um well i'll tell you what i agree with i do agree that awareness and presence is your best form of protection. So I feel like you kind of said that. And I, I, it's a bit of a paradox. It's a bit of a paradox. I, I think, so I mostly agree with there's no protection because the thing is, is like, th there's just all this stuff that we take for granted and we think, you know, we think it'll always be there and we really don't know, you know? And, uh, um, you know, a testament to that is like when I was like in, 20, 21 or whatever, I lost my best friend to a car accident. I just got a call one day and it's like, yeah, you know, do you hear what happened? And it's like, okay, they're dead. And it's like, what the hell? Like, how does this happen? You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, and I don't think they saw it coming. You know, I think maybe they had a moment of realizing they were in danger and then that's it. And, uh, you know, and uh, life is like that, you know, life can just be taken away from you in an instant. And so, um, I think there's a certain amount of like, we need to kind of look at life with a certain sound of gratitude and appreciation. Of the fact that, okay, I get another day, I get another moment. And, and if you come at it with the gratitude, you can go, well, what am I going to do with this moment? Um, you know, as far as like, you know, protection goes, I mean, yeah, I think your best, your best asset and keeping you safe in the world is paying attention and becoming aware. And the more aware you have and the more, um, 
the more you're present, I think the better off you are in everything and anything that you do. And if you're honest with yourself, I think it's another big part of being present is like, you can be like present and aware, but if you deny like the moment, like you're getting the information, but you're pretending it doesn't exist. I mean, it's, it's the same as acting or anything. It's just like, you're going to, you're going to create problems. Um, I do think there are certain elements in which you can take kind of mindful preparations for and go into something with, uh, you know, let's say quote unquote protection. So like, I'll, I'll accept mindful preparation. Yeah. <laughs> mindful preparations, you know, but like, just because you're just because you have a lot of things that are protecting you doesn't mean that you're safe either. That's all kind of an illusion. And I think there's a certain element of this conversation, which kind of revolves around that whole idea of like, we play it small because we want to be safe. And, um, I think the idea here is really, how do you, how do you become as full and as big as you can be within yourself in your expression and your and 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 going after whatever it is that matters for you and and taking risks and taking chances to have the the, the things you dream of and want but at the same time be mindful and i'd even throw in the word considerate and empathetic as well to other people as you go out there in the world for what you're doing because i would assume that most of what causes a problem is not people trying to necessarily do a bad thing, but people trying to do a good thing and they cause a problem un unknowingly. Like, you know, it's like, you know, there's lots of accidents that happen on the highway, but very rarely does someone want the accident to happen. I mean, it does occasionally happen where someone like literally tries to run someone off the road, but most of the time someone made a mistake and they were ignorant and unaware and they did something that caused uh, a problem. You know what I mean? And life is like this. So if you begin to make room for people to make mistakes, you can navigate the world and, and understand that like you're not perfect, they're not perfect. And it can kind of set you up to be just prepared, you know, but I think like Evan's saying, it's like if the sun is out and it's warm, wear a t-shirt and shorts and relax, you know, like I think that at the end of the day, like this is the thing is like we have to figure out ultimately how we're going to, how we're going to step out that door and live our lives without, you know, without hiding and, 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 and limiting ourselves so much, right? And I feel like that's what getting older is kind of like, you know, it's part of the, the wise artist's journey is they have to figure out how to become a kid again with all the wisdom and awareness that they have. Because ultimately, like, you, you know, you, you got to figure out how to gain access to that free form self you are. And at the same time, do it with the awareness and wisdom you have and like just it takes courage and it takes mindfulness it takes presence and these are all the things that Evan and I talk about all the time so tune in more <laughs> but I mean that's all I got to say I mean that's I think that's really where we're at and uh, big conversation but you know um, practical advice I mean you know I, I had to leave him with something I would just say look like be with yourself and like take, I would say, you know, the, the best way to break away from being small and playing it safe all the time is take small incremental steps to opening yourself up and expanding yourself. But, I mean, it's the best advice I could give you. You know, normally you're, you'd be out, maybe you don't say hi to someone, say hi to them and, and, and be proud of yourself for that because that's a step in the right direction. And you say hi to someone, you'll be able to do it a little bit easier the next time, a little bit easier, a little bit easier. And pretty soon you're gonna find that you're out of your shell and you're out there in the world. Thank you for listening in on our conversation today. We hope you found something helpful that you can carry forward with you. Head over to our website, wayoftheartist.com for more free exclusive material and learn about the show. If you haven't already, please support us by subscribing to the show, sharing it with people you know, 
and keeping compassionate, creative conversation going.